Welcome to the Fat Guys with Smokers podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm John. We're a couple of overweight barbecue enthusiasts trying to share our love for sweet and smoky food with the world. Thanks for hanging out with us as we talk about life, share recipes, successes, and failures that have all led to our love of cooking outdoors. Holy smokes! It's time for another episode. I was trying to hit a another hey howdy hey and I just couldn't do it. Holy smokes! Holy huh? smokes, folks! Nah, not like that. Definitely not like not that. Not like that. No. Uh, welcome, guys. I'm Mike here with John. Hey, howdy hey! <laughs> I need my own tagline. <laughs> Whitney was like, "Hey, howdy hey's John's. You got to come up with something." But I, I am happy to share the hey well, howdy hey. With I you. love hey howdy hey, man. I laughed so hard that time. <laughs> I will keep. I will keep searching for one, but. Uh, yeah. What's up, guys? Happy, uh, Valentine's Day. I guess it would have been yesterday by the time this airs, yeah? Yep. So, gentlemen, hope you remembered. Hope you killed it. If you forgot, two dozen roses. Yeah. And maybe a nice necklace. And maybe you can just play the whole, hey, everybody's out on Valentine's Day. It's way too crowded, so I'm going to take you out this weekend or something. You thought I forgot. Yeah. I didn't forget. Played you. I don't know. Honestly, I mean, you're gonna be host. Yeah, may the odds be ever in your favor, buddy. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a rough couple weeks for you. But yeah, and that's the worst <laughs> part about that one. Like, you'll get through this one mm-hmm. in a couple of weeks, and then six <laughs> months from now, out of the blue, you'll get hit with it again. Or worse, every Valentine's Day for the rest of your yeah, life. Well, that's where I was going next. Yeah. Is and then next year, <laughs> she'll start like on the first. Yeah. Of now, don't forget this time. Remember last year how you screwed the pooch and it was miserable. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was just thinking about the demographics that listen to us. Yeah. That was probably the wrong thing to say, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. might be. Sorry, everybody. I will just go easy on them, ladies. I will repent. Go easy on them. Yeah, we're dumb creatures. Mm-hmm. We've that's that's long established. Yeah. Just re- meet us where we're at. That's all we're asking. When uh, we were first married, we had zero dollars in our bank account, and we kind of decided, hey, we're really poor. Let's just call it for Valentine's Day, like we love each Ooh, other. This feels I like fell a trap. for the. It was a trap. Whitney got concert tickets for me, and I got her nothing because we had agreed to not do anything because we were super poor, and, and she I probably, felt horrible. And she, I bet she like won them. Um, she found some way to get the yeah. tickets for She free. did. She did a great job. <sighs> but I have never felt like a worse husband in my life. So, And it was early. It was like two years in, so oh, luckily gosh. I peaked early, folks. What uh, what concert was it? Jason Aldean. Oh, nice. It was actually a really fun one. That so, would be a good one. I wasn't like way into him, but I was like, sweet, an excuse to not be here working and everything, so it was actually really fun, but I got her nothing, so that was embarrassing. Yeah. Yep. Way to relive it. Yeah. Yeah, she's been a good sport, though. She does not bring it up every Valentine's Day. She almost, like, apologizes, and I'm like, no, no, that was not on you. So, anyway, holy smokes, Batman. I I got nothing. It's meat. It's what's for dinner. Boom, boom, boom. I feel like I'm just stealing old taglines. The problem is, is nobody's gonna know that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> any of the, <laughs> any of the kids listening are like, "What? What are what? you talking about? Beef? It's what's for dinner." That's true. Bum bada bum bada bum bada bum bada bum bum. Um, it was a big weekend last weekend. It was. What a great game, man! Oh my gosh, that was fun to watch. Yeah, it was a decent halftime show. Mm-hmm. Um, Usher did a good job. You know entertaining us while we had to wait for the football game to start again yeah perspectives man right so funny (laughs) (laughs) yes we know some of you watched an usher concert that had a football game 
I was gonna say, going on. But, I saw uh, a lot of things that were like, "Hey, did you know Taylor Swift's boyfriend is playing football at the Usher concert this weekend?" Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I funny. saw that. Um, but no, man, yeah, uh, I was pretty frustrated in the first half because the Chiefs just couldn't get yeah anything. Well, done. it was two good defenses, and a lot of people are like, "That was super boring. That was not. That was incredible the way they stopped like two really good offenses." Yeah, but. It did come alive in the fourth quarter and was a little more exciting to watch. It did. Sadly, the Niners couldn't pull it out, but I love the Chiefs. So, you know, Go you, Big Red. I don't know how you root against Andy Reid and Mahomes, man. They're You're... just two classy dudes. Yeah. I know lots of people can't stand Mahomes, and I don't know. I've got that strong of an opinion of him. But uh, Andy Reid is by far one of the coolest men alive. Yeah. Great dude, man. Great guy. Did you see the pictures of uh, of him at church that uh, morning? Oh, was he? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yep. Good for him. Yeah, I thought that was super cool. <laughs> That's way cool. So what? Uh, how'd the mac and cheese bar go? Dude, it was actually pretty good. So I, I ended up, they called me the night before and said, hey, do wings. So I did wings. Uh, hey, props to you for having wings on hand to do yeah. the night before with no notice. <laughs> right? Well, they they were on sale at Macy's, so I loaded up. So nice. I've had some for a while just sitting in my freezer. So it worked out okay. But uh, it was actually pretty good. Like, mac and cheese bar for the win. Like, we had my brother smoked pork shoulder, which was great. He did a great job. Uh, we had just, like, some fried chicken out on the Blackstone that my dad did. And then we had like smoked sausage and, uh, I mean, vegetables and stuff. But I mean, it was actually pretty dang good. Nice. So I was, I was not on board when they first said it. I was like, oh, all right, whatever. But it was pretty good. And was it just one type of mac and cheese or were there multiple cheese? We only had one type of mac and cheese. We had like Parmesan and stuff you could put on it, but we only had one type of mac and cheese. I support that. Yeah. It was, it was good. Nice. Yeah. I love mac and cheese, man. That's that's one of the, like, just always good. Doesn't matter where you're at. Yeah, I'm a fan. That's what my wife survives on. So, um, what'd you guys do? Um, so, my dad had surgery the week before, and we, uh, we weren't sure if he was going to be up for doing anything or not. But ended up he was. Um, so, we went over and... I smoked a couple of racks of ribs, um, which they were really good. Mm. I uh, I sauced them twice, I think. Oh, so I did. Okay, I did a three, two, one. Uh huh. But that last hour, I went out and after the sauce had kind of tacked up the first time, uh-huh. I hit it with another layer of sauce. Interesting. And it was just it was stupid good. Yeah. Yeah. Did you use your what's that sauce that um, President Rigby recommended? Oh um, no, I didn't use Head Country this head time. Head Country. I was thinking yeah. Old Country, but that didn't seem right. No, I uh, I need to get some more <clears throat> of it actually. Hmm. Um, no, we were at Walmart, and I think I've talked about this before. Like, I just love cheap barbecue sauce. Yeah. So it was a uh, like brown sugar something craft barbecue sauce right on. for a dollar ninety seven or whatever it was that yeah used to be for a dollar freaking inflation right um so yeah just did that and then mixed in some of the juices from the the foil that I wrapped them in mm. and man they were they were money so we had that seven layer dip uh, shrimp cocktail. Something else. Oh, like a cheesecake Oreo dip thing. You had me at cheesecake. That sounds amazing. Yeah. So hmm. that that was Robbie's favorite. Oh, and Charlie made Muddy Buddies. Oh, nice. Can't forget the Muddy Buddies. I'm a Muddy Buddy fan. I am too. For sure. So. Right on. Yeah. So we kind of like had a good widespread. Yeah. I'd really want to make wings, but my my kids and dad outvoted me. Yeah. So. I honestly, if I had to choose, I'd probably choose ribs too. Have you ever done party ribs? Have you what, seen that what? online? They just cut them and just cook them individually as ribs. Oh. So all the deliciousness just gets all the way around it. You know no. what I mean? Almost like a bark all the way around. It's an interesting idea. I'd like to try it. I've never tried it. I've seen a lot of them. People love them. 
Um, but so do you never done it? Like, if you were doing three, two, one, mm-hmm. when would you cut them? Before they you ever cut them go before on? you ever put them on. Yeah. Oh, so it's not even after the, the right. smoke. Yeah. You put them on. What I've seen, and I'm kind of going from memory here. This, I'm going rogue. But what I've seen is they put them in a foil pan uh, and just smoke them. And then they cover the foil pan like you would wrapping ribs. And then they just dump sauce huh. and cook them like that. So, No, I've never done that. I'm into it. I'd like to try it, but I've it's never really had a reason idea. to. I feel like you'd get... A little bit more flavor because you get a bark all the way around it, but yeah, I don't and I know. I bet they cook way faster. Yeah, and I think that's the thing. It wasn't like a three, two, one because they cooked. Yeah, it I seems bet, like they like, cooked I faster. Bet it's like in, I bet it's closer to like an hour, half hour, hour, fifteen minutes. Yeah, let me. <coughs> you can do some research. Yeah, there. I'm gonna research a second, but but no. oh, right here, top of Malcolm Ridd's. Or Reed's uh, website. Well, teach us, Malcolm. Uh, cook the ribs for 90 minutes. Oh, let's see. Okay. Remove the membrane. Cut each slab of ribs into individual bone pieces. Season the ribs on all sides. Uh, he did his on a Weber kettle grill with a Vortex. Uh, arrange the ribs on the cooking grate. Cook the ribs for 90 minutes, flipping halfway through until internal temperature reaches about... 200 degrees. Uh, Then in a bowl, you combine sugar, sauce, hoisin sauce. He did honey, sriracha, ginger, sesame oil, red pepper flakes, green onion. Asian flavors. Yeah, that sounds bomb. And then just cooked them an additional five minutes. So he didn't put them in a pan. I've seen them where they just do them in a pan, but he stood them on the vortex. So might be my next experiment. (laughs) I could uh, could get on board with that. (coughs) Way, way to hold it in, man. Yeah, that was thanks. impressive. Yeah, well, I'm sure yours picked it up just just as good. That's so. okay. It's all good. J- John, what are we talking about today? Well, let's get on topic a little bit. I don't know. I'm having fun. Yeah. But uh, no, so I've got some buddies that run a business here in town, and they're building a new building, and they've got this patio. Oh, it's for a commercial building. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, it's a patio, and it's been a minute since I've been up there, but I feel like it's like about 20 by 20. Okay. So like it's a good-sized space. Yeah, there's a lot you could do there. And we've been talking about this for a while. Like, what are they going to do on the out on the deck? Mm-hmm. And they've wanted to put a smoker out there. I'm like, guys, like if, if you're only going to put one thing out there, I wouldn't start with a smoker. Yeah. Um, Want something you could throw hot dogs on or something. Yeah, and look, they do a lot. They do a lot of R and D. They do a lot of um, late nights, so they're at the office long enough where they could do a a full smoke or mm-hmm. something. Um, but I'm like, man, I'm like, you can't really. Not everyone's gonna enjoy this. Like, yeah, you've got plenty of employees besides the four of you that are really into smoking and. Mm-hmm. You, like, think about this from from the employee perspective. Um, anyways, we were talking a while ago, and they they came to me and they were like, "We want you to come up with like the dream cooking, like outdoor cooking setup. Oh. Like if you're gonna have this patio and you were gonna have cooking stuff out on it, like what would you do? Is there a budget, or is it just they?" Shoot for the stars. The and we'll way see they what like happens. to do this is shoot for the stars and then we'll scale it back okay. to reality. All right. And I was like, <laughs> what awesome. are we going to do? And it's kind of fun because I, uh, I've been in the process of buying four wheelers lately. Mm. So I haven't been looking for grills. I haven't really, like, I've, uh, I've kind of gotten out of that mode of looking at what's available in terms of. The cooking implement. So, yeah. Um, it's kind of been fun to get back in there, but I just thought it would be cool to talk about a couple of, like, if you had a patio, and I've been coming at this trying to think about, like, 
it is rarely going to be cooking for one or two people. Like it's probably going to be for the office or like a lunch or breakfast or something. Mm -hmm. So what, what would you want on the, uh, on the patio? Okay. And I can tell you one of the first things I decided that I would put on this patio was not what I expected. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Do tell. Uh, I think I would do a pizza oven. Really? Yeah. So Blackstone in particular is it obviously Blackstone's known for their griddles and a griddle is not just a, Oh, that'd be cool. Like if we only buy one thing for this deck, I've already told them like the one thing you buy should be a flat top griddle. Ah, I support that. Um, and we can talk about that in a minute, but they make pizza ovens too. So they've got a 16, uh, or they've got a, a freestanding pizza oven runs on propane that it'll get up to 900 degrees. And I mean, it'll cook a pizza in 90 seconds. Really? Yeah. Holy cow. I didn't realize it was so fast. Yeah. And I mean, it's look, it's not like a Domino's Greek style pizza, right. but it's more of the thin Neapolitan. And I mean, yeah. my little, I've got a little uni one. Mine's a first gen uni that, that they had here in the States. It runs on um, wood pellets. It'll cook a pizza in 90 seconds. Really? Uh-huh. But it, like, mm. how cool would that be for the company lunch to get everybody <laughs> together and firehouse pizzas around the corner. You can buy their dough for like a buck a ball mm-hmm. um, and have everybody make their own pizza. Dude. Line Especially them, if it's line them 90 up. seconds. Yeah, line them up, throw it in there. And I mean, using my wood-fired one, like, we've done it where we've done done this and lined people up. Uh-huh. And it takes a minute to, like, the first couple are really fast, and then it starts to cool down. And uh-huh. they either take longer to cook, or you've got to stop and let the grill get back up to temperature. Oh, really? But still, you could... You could easily cook 20 pizzas in you know an hour really yeah Hmm. so how cool would that be to have have this grill out you know this little pizza oven out there and have people come make pizzas you know on fridays or whatever and see i've seen pizza ovens like on the market Mm -hmm. and like when i did that competition one of the prizes was a pizza oven but I haven't been that interested because I'm like, why the heck would I want a pizza oh, oven? I didn't realize that it was a 90 second cook. Well, yeah. So, and you can do pizzas. You can sear stuff in it. Oh yeah. You can do nachos. You do. You can do like. It is a endless list of things that you can do in this crazy hot oven. Golly. Uh huh. Jeez. I had no idea. Yeah. So. And Blackstone has one, huh? Yep, they do. So and that so that's one of the things that I I was like, man, we have got to put a pizza oven out on this out on this deck. So um, that's one of the things that's on my list. Yeah, I love that. But I've got a couple other things. But I'm curious, what is what's your go to? What what do you think we need to be talking about putting on? I'm dreaming a little bit, um, but do you remember when we did the episode on Japanese and Korean barbecue? Uh, uh-huh. And they had like that tabletop grill that you just sat around and cooked while uh, you talked? Yeah. I think that would be way cool for like a company thing. Now, scale-wise, I don't know how big you would want it to, you know, I don't know that you could get it big enough so the whole company could sit around it and cook and eat while they talked, but... I thought that would be kind of a cool, maybe just like a, a picnic table with one of those in the middle or something. So people could, I mean, cook and eat. And because we talked about when we were doing that, it was like a, a social thing that they did. They just brought them, got all their raw stuff and cooked while they ate. And yeah, I think that would be pretty I like cool. That. Yeah. Yeah. So that'd be a good one. And yeah, picnic tables, like there's gotta be some seating out there. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Um, 
I don't think it can be like my deck where there's you know enough yeah. room to turn there's, turn around. There's <laughs> grills and a turning area. Yeah. yeah, that's where I'm at. So no, I like that one. Yeah. Um, uh, let's talk about the the flat top. Uh, I mean, Blackstone's the big name. Camp Chef makes them. Weber makes them. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there are all sorts of other brands that make them. But yeah. I think a a big you know 36. I honestly, if you could find a a 48 or a 60 inch grill, yeah, um, like flat top griddle, that would be money up there. I think so too. Um, Blackstone used to sell it. I was looking on their website tonight. I couldn't find it anymore. But I think that would be a huge thing to be able to. Now you can do omelets. You can do hash browns pancakes you know for breakfast Mm -hmm. you can still do the burgers yeah you you can do all of the things steaks all those things yeah um and to the you know asian grilling like you can do hibachi stuff like you can do fried rice you can do all of those things that i think a a blackstone type griddle is an absolute must yeah i think i feel like it's the most I don't know if versatile is the right word, but I think so. Like, you could just do everything on that if that was the only thing that you had. Yeah. Um, Here's a question I've got for you. Do you put a traditional gas grill out there? I was wondering that, too. I feel like you almost have to just because that is probably what people are most familiar with. And so if you're going to have a bunch of different people that plan on using it, I feel like you got to have one. But I don't know. I mean... Like like we said, you can still do everything that you could do on a gas grill. I feel like you could do on a flat top. Yeah. So the when I think about gas grills versus griddles, I think you're right. You can do almost anything on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think the griddle takes a little bit longer to get hot. Yeah, that's like, true. If you're cooking a hot dog, like... You can walk out there, turn the gas grill on, put it on, and within five minutes be eating said hot dog. That's a good point, yeah. Um, you're not going to do that with a griddle. No. And I would probably give someone a dirty look if they only cooked one hamburger or one hot dog on a, on a black stove. Yeah. Yeah. And on by a gas the time gr- they waited for it to yeah. heat up. On a gas grill, that. I'd be like, yeah, okay. Yeah, that cool. checks out. Yeah. So that's a good point. See, and that's convenience wise. I feel like you got to have a gas grill out there. Yeah. Just, you know. Yeah. And it, it, and I think you have to go gas for convenience, for speed. It's at a place of business. Yeah. I would love to do um, like charcoal where mm-hmm. I was even thinking like, man, if we're, if we're going like big picture, dream big, like, Let's do a Santa Maria. Or, oh, yeah, that'd be or sweet. Let, or let's even do an offset up there. Like, yeah. Um, but it's it's on the second it's second story level, so it's up a level. Mm. And one, like, I'm a little nervous about live fire. Sure. On, like. On not concrete. Yeah, on a not concrete. Yeah. And the other thing that I'm a little bit worried about um that I've got to go look at the space now that it's finished um, is just like grease and stuff. Yeah. The, I don't know what they ended up with. Um, when we walked through, it just had like the rubber membrane, but they were talking about putting down a teak deck, mm. which um, it, it should look super cool. It actually, um, it, I, I'm expecting it to kind of have the vibes of like, the visitor center at the Apple headquarters that I don't know what that looks like. It it's on top of the, it's on top of the first floor roof. It's all teak and like, it just, it's a really chill calming Mm. kind of atmosphere and it's, it'll have a great view out at the mountains. And Mm. um, so I think you've got to preserve some of that, but I worry about doing something like charcoal or falling on that or falling on that or, you know, offsets you've got to clean them at some point like Mm -hmm. you really need a drain and yeah yeah that's a good point the bottom um well and i think and i'm not trying to sound like nobody can figure it out because it is easy 
But you don't want somebody who's never used a charcoal grill going out to throw a few burgers on for everybody. Oh, you know what I mean? I like, can already smell the lighter fluid. Right. Yeah. And like sitting in a meeting, having a bad day and smelling lighter fluid yeah. and being like, it's like, no, someone's going to get hurt. <laughs> yeah. But, that's a good call. Yeah. So, um, what else are we, any other thoughts or, um, my only other thoughts is I did, I mean, I wasn't sure that it was going to be like a commercial space. I was thinking it was going to be like a house. Mm-hmm. Um, but my thoughts, at that's least okay. these guys kind of live at the office. Yeah, so that's true. I'm thinking like a dream outdoor kitchen patio area. Uh, I would like to have just some basic like counter space, a sink, mm-hmm. a fridge maybe that doesn't always stay on. I can unplug it if I want to, but for drinks or, you know, ingredients or whatever. Yeah. I thought that would be nice. but Yeah, I could see that being nice. Yeah, I've thought about having uh, like some stainless steel tables yeah. out there to, to help with some of the, the prep. And especially if you're doing pizzas, like having a spot out there, people oh, can yeah. work on people them. People could put them together. Um, oh, man, my mind just went blank. I There was one other thing I was going to... Oh, um, I think I would... I think I would do a smoker. I do a pellet smoker out yeah. there. Yeah, I think that's fair. So, um, and I I was looking at a bunch of them. I mean, obviously I'm a Traeger guy. Love the Traeger. I think they're great. Um, and I love the Wi-Fi capability of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing though that I was looking at and I'd forgotten about is Green Mountain Grills. Mm. So Green Mountain Grills, they're out of Reno, so they're not. They're not quite as hometown as Camp Chef and and Traeger are, but they're not f- that far away either. Yeah, pretty close. They've got a rotisserie um, assembly oh. that you can put in, like, that's designed to go in there. There's a bunch of, like, wind-up rotisseries that have gotten popular lately that you can put in anything. Okay. Um, but this is, like, a motorized rotisserie that... That you put in the smoker? Yeah. Why would you want rotisserie in the smoker? Because if you go hot and fast. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Get some, like, <coughs> rotisserie-style chicken or something going yeah. in there. All right. I mean, in Peru, it is it is not the same as rotisserie chicken at Sam's Club, so yeah. don't, don't think that, but mm-hmm. it is a type of rotisserie chicken is, like, the most popular food in all of Peru. Really? Yeah. Hmm. They've got, like, we have KFCs. They have several restaurants that do <coughs> do pollo a la brasa, is mm. what they call it. But mm. Interesting. But, so you can do that. You can also get a pizza insert for the Green Mountain Grill. Really? That if you're going to consolidate a few things. I don't know that the Green Mountain Grill gets quite as hot, uh-huh. um, but it would still be an option. Yeah. I gotta start looking at pizza ovens, man. You've really Dude, opened I'm... up my like. We eat a lot of pizza at our house, and like I said, I've always just been like, just throw it in the oven. Why do you need a pizza oven? I didn't realize the speed no, at dude, which they cook. If it nothing else, throw it out on your smoker. Yeah, well, I do that, and I do enjoy that. But even that takes twenty yeah minutes or so. Yeah, you it's, know, it's faster than doing it in the oven because you get this like convection oven type effect. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's not a pizza oven pizza oven Hmm. interesting so so i think we uh we certainly have a few things to chat about yeah with with them so i'm excited to that's awesome dude yeah i'll keep you in the loop yeah take a lot of pictures i'm interested in yeah what they do and it'll be how it turns out it'll be a super cool space yeah so yeah i'm uh i'm excited we need to i've like been thinking through it and like trying to like do you want picnic tables do you want more like bar height tables yeah. um hmm. get some good like outdoor and i think you need just like you need just like a good a couple set of like adirondack <coughs> chairs or something out there that you can just sit i'm amazed at like when i start to get stressed out at work even when it's like frigid and cold like just walking outside and like feeling the sunshine mm-hmm is like therapeutic for me. Yeah. That's awesome. So I can, what a cool place to work. Like I can to come up with this for employees. Right. And like, I mean, it, they're a smaller company and you know, where I work now, we used to have grills and, mm-hmm. 
anyone could use them. And then we started having to do trainings and you had to be grill certified. And Oh, really? <laughs> then I we eventually, we just kind of got rid of the grills <laughs> because it was, man, it, it was crazy how many people would fight over the grill being dirty or really? who got to use it and who couldn't use it. And hmm. yeah. So why we don't have nice things, Mike? Yeah. Well, you're talking to a guy in education. Our faculty room is broken tables that we didn't want in our kids or in our rooms anymore. So oh, that kills me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, so that's the exciting news. I love it. I know. That's way cool. Um, in other news, we did a poll. We did. And uh, people responded. They did. I was a little nervous nobody would respond. I, I'm not going to lie. Part of them may have been my wife on every account she could get her hands on. Oh, well, that's fair. <laughs> She's not a Tuesday fan, I gather. She is not a Tuesday fan. She, uh... She's got commitments on Tuesday nights, so when we decide to do lives on Tuesday nights, she's like running home to try, nah. and, try and keep the kids quiet while they're upstairs. <laughs> That's fair. So, but, all right. Haley, message received. Yeah. I'm cool a, with that. Uh, a very resounding answer of letting us know that our next live will be next week on the 21st. 21st. So, That's Wednesday, everybody. Wednesday. 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 That's not as cool as Sunday. Sunday. That's true. But it's like a hump day. Hump, hump day. day. Mike, Mike, Mike. Mike Guess Mike, what Mike, Mike. day it is. Such a good commercial. Classic. Yeah. They don't make them like they used to. At what time, John? Uh, 8.30. 8.30, I think. Cool. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mark your calendars, people, because we love to have you there. It's way more fun when people are actually uh, yeah. engaging with us and stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong. Mike and I have a good time regardless. Oh, we're, we will sit and talk about barbecue regardless of who's here <laughs> listening, <laughs> obviously, but... But, yeah, the banter is fun. fun. The uh, Everything's a... It's a good experience. I think we've... We had a couple of bugs last time of knowing when to, when to start talking, when not to start yeah. talking. Yeah. We got that all figured out. We're... Uh, so, come hang out with us next week, Wednesday at 8.30, uh, YouTube Live. If anybody out there really knows how to do live events and knows how to multicast without having to pay a fortune for extra software, uh, hit us up because it'd be fun to have it going on Facebook or Instagram too. So Yeah, and if you can explain what multicast means to me um, in layman's terms, that would be appreciated as well. So... so. Multi comes from the Latin root of multiple. I have no idea if it's Latin or not. But that seems legit. Meaning many. Okay. And cast means to send. So like you're sending to multiple, to multiple places. places. To YouTube. So, oh, Facebook. all at the same time, huh? Yeah. All right. Okay. I mean, from context, that's kind of what I gathered, but I wanted yeah. to make sure. Cool. I thought it'd sound smart, and I just came off really... <laughs> like an a-hole so oh, no it was great it's great john just kidding i was gonna use a different word an a-hole was the was the better option good call because i've already <laughs> i've already ticked off a lot of our listeners tonight uh also hats if you're interested in a hat hit us up yeah only several a, of you have kind of exciting only but, a couple left yep tune we're looking at you let us know how you're pecking yours up yeah um but yeah also potty We've talked. Finish up. Potty, potty, potty. Silly goose. He's going to use an excuse like, well, I was traveling. I was at work. Like he even does that. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, man. I don't think we've talked about this on here. Hmm. And it'll be a little bit of a teaser because he's agreed to come on and talk about his experience. Oh. Did everyone catch that horrific scene of the burnt ribs on our Instagram? Oh, yes. That's right. Oh my gosh. That was the worst. Our buddy uh, got a new grill and we don't know what happened. We don't know if a kid messed with the grill, if he didn't set it right. The investigation is ongoing. And that's a good thing because he's a detective. Yeah. He'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, And if he doesn't, I'm worried about it. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Anyways, he... 
<laughs> it was the second cook he had ever done on this grill. He put his ribs on, ran back to work, came back three hours later, and instead of the grill being at like 225, it was at almost 500 degrees. Ugh. And the ribs literally just, it was like lump charcoal. It was so like, sad. It disintegrating man. as he pushed on it. Hmm. Um, so if you want to see something sad, go check out our Instagram. It was back a couple of posts, but um, Brad's going to come on. Talk to us about being a new grill owner. Oh, sweet. Finally getting off his butt and getting a smoker. Right on. So, and Brad's just a fun guy to He's delightful. With. I'm excited. So, um, we'll do that here, I don't know, in the next couple of weeks. Cool. That'll be sweet. But until next time. I'm Mike. And I'm the guy trying to get the computer to work. And we're. Fat Guys with Smokers. hey Thanks for listening to the Fat Guys with Smokers podcast. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Be sure to subscribe so you don't forget to tune in for even more nonsense from a couple of Fat Guys with Smokers. Don't forget to like, subscribe.